The April 23rd, 2017 meeting of the Human Services Committee will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mrs. Conley? Here. Mrs. Draw is excused. Ms. Harris is excused. Mr. Hebert? Here. Mr. Lightfoot? Here. Mr. Moyo? Here. Ms. Taylor? Here. Mr. Wilt? Here. Chairman Zell? I'm here. And President Carbone? Here. Is there anyone signed up for the public forum? There is. We have two speakers. When I call your name, please come forward to the podium. You'll have two minutes in which to address the committee. Please conclude when the buzzer sounds. Thank you. Our first speaker is Mark Assini. Thank you. Great to be back in this body again with such uh, distinguished legislators. Uh, I came today to offer my support for referral 18-0132, uh, the outsourcing of uh, forensic pathology reports uh, in the ME's office. And simply stated, the backlog right now of toxicology reports in time is about eight months. And unfortunately, what that does for families is it puts them in a very difficult position for those moms and dads, sisters and brothers, aunts and uncles that are waiting for results to understand exactly what happened to their loved one in the case of a, an overdose, in particular with the heroin crisis and the fentanyl crisis that we're facing. Eight months is way too long. That's too much to ask of family members. Second, the Police departments and the DA also have to wait for these results to prosecute. So it puts additional pressure on the district attorney's office and it puts pressure on the police departments. So the fact that you're looking at outsourcing these toxicology reports to catch up the backlog is a good thing and I stand in support of that. Now, here's one recommendation I would have and hope you consider. Um, my understanding is that only a piece of this will be outsourced. And when I say that, it's my understanding that uh, results from other counties that are coming in are going to be outsourced and not our county. I would suggest to you the less complicated uh, tests also be outsourced. And when I say less complicated, those that are not likely to uh, be prosecuted or have uh, the DA's office have to bring in expert testimony. And so the more you outsource, the quicker you're going to catch up the backlog. So in the cases of less complicated tests, consider outsourcing those also. And I think you'll find that the backlog will be caught up much, much quicker. Again, thank you to the administration, and uh, I appreciate the fact that they're considering this outsourcing. It's a good thing for this community, and I want to thank the legislators for uh, this, the consideration on this matter. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jim Van Bretero. Uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, Jim Van Bretto, the Chief of Police in the Town of Gates. I'm also the uh, President of the Monroe County uh, Chiefs of Police Association. Uh, two things. Number one, we'd like to uh, thank you guys uh, for adding those two toxicology positions. I was last here in July addressing the Public Safety Committee uh, about the Medical Examiner's Office, and, and thank you for, uh, for listening to that part. Uh, secondly, you know, obviously we're still backlogged, and I, I think this whole concept of outsourcing to get us through the storm uh, would be a good concept, and we would appreciate any support that you guys could do for that. Um, and it's not just for the families, it's for the defense attorneys, it's for the prosecutors, the funeral directors, uh, and the insurance companies, and everyone else who's, who's affected by the, the delay in getting that death certificate. So again, thank you very much for <clears throat> listening to our concerns, and uh, I hope you do support the outsourcing of some of those lab tests. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone present who has not signed up to speak who would like to address the committee at this time? Seeing none, the next item of the agenda is approval of minutes. You have the March 27, 2018 minutes before you. They will stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any changes by the end of the day. The next item on the agenda is new business. Madam Clerk? Referral 18-0131, amend resolution 320. Moved by Legislator Taylor, le uh, second by Legislator Conley. Is there any discussion on this item? 
Legislator Lightfoot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one of the questions that I have, Mr. Chairman, is um, an effort to try to understand uh, what is being requested. Uh, it says here uh, to me uh, that uh, the total amount is not to exceed $100,000 um, to a total amount not to exceed $300,000. Um, do you, Mr. President, can administration explain that? Through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Legislator Lightfoot, could you please repeat the question? Sure. Uh, here, uh, you know, the legislation is asking us uh, that uh, that the request is to not to exceed one hundred thousand uh, dollars collectively, and then it goes to tell us that to a total amount not to, not to exceed three hundred thousand thousand dollars collectively. And I would like the administration to explain me uh, what they are uh, requesting. Uh, through the chair, uh, we're seeking an amendment to the original contract. The wording of the original contract was not to exceed 100,000. And we're asking for the wording to be changed to not to exceed 300,000. We're asking for an increase in the allocation. <laughs> OK, thank you. And through you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration, uh, it lists that uh, a couple of uh, organizations or companies that we do contract uh, with, uh, Adico Medical, so forth and so on, and any other qualified respiratory therapy service, service agencies. Um, do we have any other uh, respiratory therapy agencies, service agencies in mind or? Through the chair, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Currently, those are the only agencies that are capable of providing respiratory therapists. Uh, we do have contracts with several other agencies for nursing personnel, and we wanted to be able to keep our cells open uh, in case some of these other companies uh, were able to provide respiratory therapists. They are uh, very difficult to recruit and retain. And thank you. And finally, uh, why are we asking for the increase? Uh, because we have not been able to fill our positions that we have uh, at the facility. Uh, approximately 40% of our current budgeted positions are vacant, and we, are not, we have not been able to fill them. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you. Any other questions on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next item. Referral 18-0132. Moved by Legislator Conley, seconded by Legislator Hebert. Is there any discussion on this item? Legislator Conley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the administration, uh, I was wondering if you could tell us if the suggestions that were made by Supervisor, Supervisor Assini in his um, remarks to the committee, if those um, suggestions are um, something that the administration is already doing or something that the administration is willing to do. Through the chair, I, I believe that this just references this um, particular issue is pathology services and doesn't necessarily involve the toxicology aspect of our office operations. Any other discussion? Legislator Moyle. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you uh, to the administration, can uh, the administration explain the difference between uh, what you just said was, okay, toxicology versus a forensic pathologist? What, what is the difference there, please? Certainly. So um, there, there's two, uh, through the chair, there's two basic portions to the um, medical examiner operations. There's the, the field services, which are the individuals that respond to the scene, evaluate the case, return it to the doctor for examination. <coughs> Those physicians are the pathologists. Um, they're performing the autopsies, um, attempting to establish the cause and manner of death. The toxicology section is a, a subset of sorts. Um, it's a particular set of analyses that are completed that are then used by the uh, pathologist to better confer with a reasonable degree of medical certainty the cause and manner of death. Um, in us living folks, it's very similar to you see your PCP for either the doctoring portion and then they send you across to how the lab to have your blood work done. Um, this portion, this, re this referral relates to the physician portion. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Any other questions on this matter? Legislator Lightfoot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to the administration, this uh, professional services contracts, uh, are any of these uh, people's uh, minorities of color? Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the administration. Uh, through the chair, currently this is a group of physicians that are employed at the New York City's um, Office of the Chief Medical Examiner. Um, there are no minorities, uh, to the best of my knowledge. There are three physicians we are currently working with. Um, they are a lady and two gentlemen. Thank you. Any other questions on this matter? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. Referral 18-0133, authorized contract. Move. Moved by Legislator Hebert, seconded by Legislator Wilt. Is there any discussion on this matter? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Next item, please. Referral 18-0134. Move it, Mr. Chairman. Moved by Legislator Wilt, seconded by Legislator Taylor. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. Referral 18-0135. Moved by Legislator Taylor, seconded by Legislator Conley. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. Referral 18-0136, acceptance of a grant. Moved by Legislator Conley, seconded by Legislator Hebert. Is there any discussion on this item? Legislator Conley. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to the administration. I was wondering if you could tell us where the baby cafes are going to be located. Yes, through the chair. Um, I have a list of their locations. If I can just figure out where I put it, sorry. Um, there are four locations. Two are already opened and operating. One of those is at the Women's Health Services location on Lattimore Road. And the second one that's open is located within Highland Hospital. Both of those opened in February. Um, there is a third one that's going to be located at Park and Alexander within the old Genesee Hospital site. And that's going to open in June. The fourth one is going to be um, located within a Rochester general pediatric practice that's moving to the old tops building at Ridge and Hudson that's going to open in August after the move thank you can I just ask is the are the baby cafes going to be affiliated with the health care agencies that they're like for example the Highland Hospital will will it be affiliated with Highland or will it strictly be the University of Rochester program or through the chair, the long-term plan and the reason for locating it at these sites is so that they can become affiliated. The, those practices have an interest in sustaining these baby cafes after the grant ends. And so there's some um, planning going on, some initial planning and discussion going on so that the baby cafes will be sustained beyond the 
um, three-year grant period. Thank you. Does the baby cafe that's anticipated to be located at the pediatric office, is there a lactation consultant that's already on staff at that pediatric office, or would that lactation consultant be traveling from somewhere else through the chair to the administration? Through the chair. At this point, the lactation consultant is going to be provided through the grant um, with the idea that we would like to move toward having a lactation consultant from that practice, but that's not a definite, we don't have a person yet. Thank you. Legislator Taylor. Uh, through the chair, has Monroe County received similar grants or participated in any programs like this? Legislator Taylor, could you just repeat your question into the microphone, please? I'm holding. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, through the chair. Uh, I just wanted to know if Monroe County has received similar grants or participated in any programs of this nature in the past. Through the chair, there is no other grant that is just like this one. Um, the University of Rochester has an NIH grant that they have subcontracted with Monroe County for some services, um, including a lactation consultant and your counselors that's a different grant the focus is a little bit different from this okay thank you any other discussion on this item seeing none all those in favor signify by saying aye, aye. any opposed item carries next item please referral 18-0140 moved by legislator Hebert second by legislator Wilt any discussion on this item <clears throat> Excuse me, Legislator Moyo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, through you to the administration, um, I'm wondering, first of all, uh, why this is a matter of importance. Um, did, we, did we miss the fact that the, it was going to become due May 1st, or uh, is there an explanation surrounding that? Thank you. Through the chair, uh, we have uh, contracts outstanding with counties uh, and have uh, given, them, given them till May 1st to find location for the services. And the May 1st date, uh, we're hoping, is the uh, starting date of our uh, seeking outside uh, assistance as well. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question uh, through the chair to the administration regarding the current backlog that this is designed to address. Can you give an indication about what the backlog is for toxicology reports right now? Through the chair, it's my understanding it is approximately a thousand cases. Thank you, and of maybe a timeline on, um, does the administration have a timeline uh, for how long maybe the longest wait is versus the shortest wait and maybe a median wait time through the chair? I don't believe we have that kind of information through the chair. Uh, I know that uh, in 2017 we had approximately 796 Monroe County autopsies and about 290 from outside Monroe County. Uh, we're hoping that once this program um, is undertaken, that that uh, time for the turnaround will be considerably lower. Uh, but since we're not starting till May 1st, it's going to take some time to work out to work off the uh, backlog that's currently pending. Okay, forgive me. Then I'm a little confused because I thought the path the forensic pathologists that we approved earlier that those were the people doing the autopsies and that 140 is for toxicologists, which would be the, the correlation to the blood work, so more like chemical tests. Uh, through the chair, am I confused to the administration? Through the chair, I am not certain whether you are confused. Um, however, the toxicology um, for the medical examinations, medical examiners outside the county uh, autopsies will be referred out as of May 1st, 
those expenses will be borne directly by the counties who send the body to our um, medical examiner. The medical examiner will conduct the pathology portion, but not the toxicology portion of those cases starting on May 1st. Uh, to the extent that our medical examiner is of the opinion uh, that Monroe County uh, deceased autopsies should have the toxicology portion sent out to uh, address the backlog, this will give her the authority to do so up to the amount that we have requested. Okay, thank you. I'll let Legislator Lightfoot ask your question. Any other questions? Legislator Conley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through the Chair to the Administration, um, can you tell us how this contract will work? Okay, so basically when an examination is performed through the Chair, what they're going to do is directly refer the samples to the, the reference laboratory. Um, they receive them through, I, I think it's FedEx. They, they assess the samples, they run it <coughs> and uh, a screen, and then upon a screen, they confirm and quantify what they may find during the screen. Um, those results are then returned to our office for re revision and review by the, um, the forensic pathologist, which is essentially the, the first resolution that we spoke of. Um, not only the contract doctors, but our own in-house physicians. Um, once that happens, that, that's essentially the process. Um, the, the, the matter of, of backlog, um, cases that are already in the hopper are going to remain in the hopper, and the, what we're not going to have is more things pushing on the back end of that. Um, this contract will allow us to, to basically tread water, get ahead above water. Um, as you're well aware, um, that two positions were created for toxicologists. They've been hired. We have to get them online. Um, they, they don't come instantly qualified, so it takes a while to get them up to snuff. Um, once we're going and we're more efficient, hopefully we'll be able to resolve this and again return the work to our own Monroe County lab. Thank you. And, and through the chair, approximately how many tests do you do we anticipate sending to M NMS? Um, based on 2017 numbers, we're estimating <coughs> between 400 and 450 cases. Through the chair. Thank you. And through the chair, will the the people who perform the tests out of county, will they need to be present at the medical examiner's office or will the, um, will the labs out of county be able to do the testing out of county and then um, send the results to Monroe County? Yeah, th uh, through the chair, this is entirely done outside of our office. The samples are obtained at our office and then shipped to the, the reference lab where the work is performed and then the results are returned to our office. Thank you. And, and through the chair, um, NMS is referred to as a sole source responder. Can, can you tell me what does that mean? Does that mean that no one else provides this service? Uh, through the chair, there are other laboratories that provide this service. When we're evaluating the laboratories, uh, we based our decision essentially on one, its location. It's in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania, uh, roughly a five hour ride away. Um, and this will be important in a second. The second was many of the counties that we service whose cases are now going to be sent to these off-site reference labs already have some type of arrangement with this laboratory. So the um, wrinkle in the system we're creating will be further created by having them have to deal with another lab. And, and third is based on the volume, including this group of counties that we will be serving, um, there is a significant reduction in cost to us. Any other questions on this item? Legislator Heber. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to the administration, you had indicated that it, the new toxicologists, when they come on board, will not be um, qualified, I guess is the way I would put it. When would you estimate that they will be able to do productive work? Um, through the chair, that they're qualified for the position. It's just learning how do we do it here in Monroe, how are things assessed, where are different implementation lies, the methodology is being followed, and the answer direct to your question is, is roughly a year, nine months to a year. Thank, thank you. Any other questions? Legislator Taylor. Uh, do we anticipate using the whole 250000 and how was this amount determined? Uh, through the chair, that's a real difficult um, answer. It's only because of the unknown nature of, of who's going to die and by what means. Um, essentially, what we did is we looked at the, the basic testing that would be required. 
Um, again, the estimate of 100 to 450 cases at, at the, um, the rate that we were, were working with was $225 per specimen type, so blood would cost that. Um, the certain tests are beget certain tests. It, you can't just go out and say, I'm going to do this. If you, have, if you don't find anything, obviously the case is done and it's, it's very easy. But as you're evaluating the case and, and you're finding the materials, those cases become more and more complex. So you, you really don't know the complexity of a case until you start the case. Um, and as a case develops, there may be additional analyses that are required. In, in the case of, of heroin, for example, which is rather the bane of the community, the initial testing will show morphine in, in the blood. Um, and then what we'd have to do is look to urine for particular metabolites that confirm that the, the morphine was actually born of heroin. Um, so th this is kind of the nature of, of the science of toxicology, which is um, I only have a very limited familiarity with, but based on putting together our volume of cases, um, the cases that are likely going to show morphine, um, the cases that are likely going to show fentanyl, um, there, there's another classic case um, that is not the most pleasant of discussions, but it, but it is. Our, our bodies who haven't been discovered for a period of time after they've passed um, become very decomposed. Um, the, decomposed state of the body doesn't preclude them having used drugs um, in, in the course of, of their expiration. So you need to actually send tissue samples. Um, we're, we're estimating about 50 of those cases a year, again, based on 2017. And those come in at $300 a case to, to do those particular analyses. So it, it's a little more cost complex. And, and we put together the best we could with, with the numbers to try to get an accurate assessment. Thank you. Legislator Moyo. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chair. Through you to the administration, are, is any of the information received from NMS, go, is it ever used in a, in a court case? Is it presented as evidence? Do you know? Um, through the chair, one of the decisions in which cases to send to the reference laboratory revolves around that very subject. When you have a case that's going to be related to a, a court finding, um, the likelihood is the analysis, the analysts are going to have to testify to their analyses, which means you have to bring them in at a cost. What we're going to try to do is capture and keep retained in Monroe County those cases that are likely to require some type of, of, of court action. Um, again, you, you don't know what's there until you know what's there, so some of those might slip through. Um, but, but the general goal is to keep the cases that are likely to be court related, um, specifically a, a, a homicide, an out and out you know, stabbing, for example. Um, which you can clearly see is, is a homicide, but there's still toxicology associated with it, um, that will stay, you know, local. A, a real high level of suspicion on a case that in working with community law enforcement, they recognize that this is a case where they're likely to try to seek out the dealer. Um, that's going to re result in a court appearance. We're going to try to keep those cases local as well. Okay, thank you very much. And would this contract cover travel costs for uh, someone who needed to travel from Pennsylvania to come and testify through the chair? Uh, through the chair, we did not recognize costs for that in our agreement. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion on this item? Before we take a vote, I just wanted to thank the administration for finding a solution. Uh, we know that this is a national shortage on medical examiners and we just appreciate the efforts and the attention to this. All those in favor on this item, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Are there any other matters to come before this committee? Seeing none, the April 23rd, 2018 meeting of the Human Services Committee stands adjourned. The next meeting of the Human Services Committee will be held on Tuesday, May 22nd, 2018 at 5.30 p.m. Thank you.